would never affect interest just for effect. Affect versus effect. If you don't know the difference between affect and effect, don't worry, you're not alone. These two words are consistently among the most searched for words in online dictionaries, and I get at least one email message a week asking me to explain the difference. In fact, the confusion over affect and effect could be why impact has emerged to mean affect in business writing. People give up trying to figure out the difference between affect and effect and rewrite their sentences, unfortunately substituting an equally inappropriate word. See impact later. The difference between affect and effect is actually pretty straightforward. The majority of the time, you use affect as a verb and effect as a noun. Affect most commonly means something like to influence or to change. The arrows affected aardvark. The rain affected Squiggly's plans. Affect can also mean roughly to act in a way that you don't feel, as in he affected an air of superiority. Effect has a lot of subtle meanings as a noun, but to me the meaning of result seems to be at the core of most of the definitions. The effect was eye-popping. The sound effects were amazing. The rain had no effect on Squiggly's plans. So most of the time, affect is a verb and effect is a noun. There are rare instances where the roles are switched, but this is quick and dirty grammar, not comprehensive grammar. And if you stick with the verb-noun rule, you'll be right about 95% of the time. An effective memory trick. For our purposes, affect is a verb and effect is a noun. Now we can get onto the memory tricks. First, get this image in your mind. The raven flew down the avenue. Why? Because the letters A, V, E, N in both raven and avenue are the same first letters as affect verb effect noun. Need another one? Because effect is usually a noun, that means you can usually put an article in front of it, and the sentence will still make sense. Listen to these examples. The effect is eye-popping. He kissed her for the effect. In both of these cases, effect is a noun, and you can put the in front of it without making the sentence completely weird. The isn't necessary in the second example, but it doesn't ruin the sentence. On the other hand, listen to these sentences, where affect is a verb. The eye-popping arrow, the, affects everyone that way. The kiss, the, affected her. You can't insert the direct article, the, before affect in those sentences, which means you want to use the verb affect and not the noun, effect. I remember this rule by remembering that the ends with e, an effect starts with E, so the two E's butt up against each other. The effect was eye-popping. Exception alert. Affect can be used as a noun when you're talking about psychology. It means the mood that someone appears to have. For example, a doctor may say, the patient displayed a happy affect. Psychologists find the word useful because they can never really know what someone else is feeling. Technically, they can only know how someone appears to be feeling. Effect can be used as a verb that essentially means to bring about or to accomplish. For example, you could say, Aardvark hoped to effect change within the burrow. Although it's not a real rule, it still bothers me. Although versus while. I often have to tell people their pet peeves aren't actually hard and fast grammar rules. I have to tell people it's okay to split infinitives, and in some cases it's fine to end a sentence with a preposition. I know it's upsetting to find out your nearest and dearest beliefs are wrong because I have my own mistaken pet peeve. It bugs me no end when people use while to mean although, but however hard I looked, I couldn't convince myself I was right. Oh, the horror. You see, I believe although means in spite of the fact that, as in, Although the tree was tall, Squiggly and Aardvark thought they could make it to the top. Although is what's called a concessive conjunction, meaning that it's used to express a concession. On the other hand, I believe that while should be reserved to mean at the same time, as in while Squiggly gathered wood, Aardvark hid the maracas. 
At first, I was sure I was right, because Eric Partridge said in his book, Usage and Abusage, that while for although is a perverted use of the correct sense of while, which properly means at the same time. Ha. But then I discovered that Fowler's modern English usage states it's normal and acceptable to use while to mean although. Fowler even called Partridge's comment indefensible. It's a grammar rumble, people. I decided to go over their heads and see what the Oxford English Dictionary has to say, and it backs up Fowler with an entry stating that while can mean although. Two additional dictionaries concurred. I was thwarted, but I'd given it a good shot. One reason I'm telling you this story is that I want you to know that I go to this much trouble to validate all of your pet peeves, too, but sometimes it isn't possible. My only small vindication is that there are sentences where it's confusing to use while to mean although, and then it isn't allowed. For example, if you said, while squiggly is yellow, aardvark is blue, people wouldn't know whether you were contrasting their colors or saying that aardvark is only blue when squiggly is yellow. In cases like that, you have to use although. So moving forward, I'll continue to reserve while for times when I mean at the same time. Old habits are hard to break. But I will now refrain from striking at while every chance I get. I wonder if the modern manners guy will want me to send apology cards to all the writers I've terrorized about this over the years. I hope not. Next, I have two related bonus facts for you. First, there isn't any difference between although and though when they're being used as described previously. Though is a less formal version of although, but it's in such common use that it's okay to use it in formal writing, too. Second, while and whilst both mean the same thing. Although whilst is still used in British English, it's considered archaic in American English. It's just a language quirk that whilst survived in Britain but perished in America.